Hey folks, Craig Levati here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. I am on the seventh floor of our parking garage. That's Taurosaurus to some of you guys out there. Some of you might not know that we have our own greenhouse on the seventh floor. Yes, this is the greenhouse that supplies everything for the Cockerel Butterfly Center. We even hatch butterflies in here. Let's go check it out. Oh, hey Craig. Hi, Teresa Lancaster everybody. She's the horticulturist for the Cockerel Butterfly Center. And you're just who I needed to meet to get a tour of the greenhouse. Well, that's awesome. Let's come on in and we can start that tour. Please don't cut me. This is greenhouse one, and this is where the magic happens. So this is where some of the magic starts for the plants. Yes. These are uh, hundreds and hundreds of different seeds that have just began germinating um, that we are starting to grow for the plant sale. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of tiny little plants the dill starting to come up, you can see so tiny. So everything you see here, you don't see much because it hasn't germinated very much, but uh, it's all really good nectar plants for butterflies or it's host plant for butterflies. Now, when a plant is this small, do you ever give them sort of like, you know, motivational speeches? They need encouragement. You can do it. There we go. You grow, girl. You grow, girl. All right, now this plant looks pretty familiar. Who is this? Well, a lot of people don't see it in this stage of its life cycle. When you normally see this plant, it's about my height and is really stinky and is actually the biggest inflorescence in the world. Corpse flower. Yeah! It's the corpse flower when it's not in its blooming stage. This is, it doesn't smell like anything. Oh. This is a Morphophallus titanum. This is the big corpse flower that everyone goes crazy about. Um, but when she's not blooming, they only bloom like seven to 10 years, every seven to 10 years. When she's not blooming, she's up here hanging out with me. I'm feeding her, getting her nice and fat. She's going into her hibernation stage. So you see her, her leaves are yellowing. She's getting kind of droopy. She's not dying. Don't get upset or sad, Craig. She's we gonna come back. We need another corpse flower though at the museum. She's gonna we come back. Well, I'm, I'm feeding her. And hopefully this year or next year, we'll get a stinky bloom from her. Um, it's a single leaflet. This isn't a tree with bark. It's a one single leaflet. I don't even know if you understand what I'm saying. Like this is okay. a single leaflet. Yeah. This is like a gigantic, weird plant that exists in the world. So I want to show you on a much smaller scale what's going on underneath the ground of this Amorphophallus. This is a different species. The flower is only about this big. Still cute though. Um, but I, this, is, this is what's going on underneath the soil. So it's actually has very, very little roots. And so it's just incredible how big it gets. And then it's like this like shape of a bowl that you can fit in your hand. So this is called a corm. And it's a big storage root. And these guys self, so like in one pot will be like several little ones. You can, these are in the butterfly center, but they're just not as attractive. You don't see them um, as easily. So all these plants that we're seeing in here right now, they will all eventually become part of the Cockerel Butterfly Center family. Yeah, everything you see around you is being grown for the Butterfly Center, for our plant sales, and for our butterfly rearing program. So I would just come up here all day with just pruning shears and just prune. Like I that's like all you. I would do. Could I do that one yeah, day? Yeah, well, if I train you. <laughs> and as an apprentice after four years, I might, I might years, give you a pair of four shears. Years? Okay. Four years, it takes a while. It just seems like there's a lot of, like I'm really big on like clutter, like not, uh, I'm really big on decluttering, so I could see myself coming up here. Just going, it's very satisfying. Is it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now these are some of the most interesting plants I've seen in here so far. Yeah, it's they're like really a, cool. It's like nature's shot glass. You're right. It's <laughs> a carnivorous digestive shot glass. These are called Nepenthes. And the common name is pitcher plant. Can you get, can you see where it gets its name? <laughs> They're tiny pitchers. And so inside of these pitchers, the plant uh, creates these, this digestive juice. And you actually you can see, turn it around, you can see a tiny ant on it right now. So the ant is attracted to this uh, sweet excretion around the top of the pitcher. It falls in and gets digested. Let's just pour this out and see what we see in here. So take a good look, really get in there. What do you see? Ants, bugs, life. Doesn't really smell like anything. Mm. Don't drink it. Don't drink it! So we actually have to waft it. a bunch of really fat Drosophila, which are, common name, 
For real. Bugs. Bye. I've been watching too much uh, Parks and Rec. So we have a bunch of yeah uh, ants, and then there's a chrysopteran, there's a cricket, uh, big cockroaches. Um, it's pretty incredible. This plant can digest a cockroach body, which cockroaches can seemingly survive like explosions and atomic bombs, but this plant right here can digest that. This whole table we've been working on since last summer, and it is a pipe vine, it's a host plant for the pipe vine swallowtail. And it just makes me so happy to see so much host plant because this is so hard to find in Houston. A plant grown specifically for caterpillars that has not been treated with deadly chemicals that kill the caterpillars. And all of this is going to be at the plant sale and it's looking so good. Very excited. All right, I know what this is. This is milkweed for butterflies for monarchs. Yes! Tell me more. It's red and yellow. So what's so great about milkweed? They feed the dairy butterfly. Good joke. And the uh, cow. I love where you're going, but I'm gonna add a few things. What's so great about milkweed is it's a host plant for caterpillars, for the monarch caterpillar, and it's also a really great nectar source for all pollinators. See this brightly colored flower? Each little yellow area is filled with nectar where anyone can fly by and drink breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All right, I know what this is. This is basil. Yeah. So if I'm ever hungry at my desk, can I just come up here and just start nibbling on some plants? If you come up here and you're hungry, you can use it to like, you can accent your food. But Garnish. You cannot eat the whole plant. Garnish my chicken tenders. Doesn't it smell nice though? Mm. Yeah, we have several plants up here that are edible um, and that are also great pollinator plants. You don't even really think about it. Uh, Dill, fennel, rue, these are all host plants for native butterflies. And also we will have them at the plant sale because um, they're really great host plants. But this one I really love. Uh, it does really good in Houston and it's a constant bloomer. It smells nice when you brush by it and then the, the bees just love it. They go up crazy for it. And it really tastes good with uh, spring rolls and pho. Mmm, lunchtime. Now we're deeper into the greenhouse over here. What are all these guys? This is, uh, these are all plants for the butterflies. So this is uh, the host plant for the Heliconius. It's a genus, a butterfly. And they can totally annihilate a plant in just a few days. So we have to con uh, constantly switch out plants. So these are resting and out of the arms and mouths of the caterpillars. And then we'll rotate them out of our flight cage. Can we see the butterflies now? You guys want to see some butterflies? Uh, Miss Teresa, why are those two butterflies uh, hugging? Uh, they are mating, Craig. It happens a lot, and it's how we get more butterflies. All right, now all of a sudden, butterflies just like started they to come did. over here. They did. They really, they started, they're starting to surround you. Um, but you know what that could mean? Well, butterflies are attracted to like dirt and sweat. So. All right, we got all the butterflies over here eating now, having a good time. Sort of like a butterfly golden corral. It is like a buffet. And we have all of their favorite foods here. Pintas are a staple, should be a staple in any pollinator garden, but we use it a lot because uh, it uh, flowers year round and provides really stable nectar for our butterflies. Uh, but up here in the past two or three years, we've really increased our butterfly production. We call it rearing, butterfly rearing. And um, we are seeing fantastic results. These are all going to be future Butterfly Center butterflies, and they're hard at work making more butterflies for us. I understand that you guys also import a lot of these from other parts of the world. We do import most of our butterflies and most of the butterflies that you'll see in the Butterfly Center, um, but we have begun just uh, rearing as much as we can, but because of space and host plant, we can only do so many. So right now we're doing, um, everything in here is a Heliconius butterfly, it's a genus. Uh, long wing Central America butterfly. Really easy to rear because they are generalists, uh, which means they can eat several different types of passiflora as a caterpillar. And so to feed them, it's a lot easier than something that eats a plant that grows really slowly and is very specific. This is one of my favorite caterpillars. Uh, it's a zebra long wing, uh, Heliconius cheritonia. Uh, but uh, their little faces, I don't know, can you see the, the face? It looks like they're wearing little masks. Like, it, I don't know why it always reminds me of like Insane Clown Posse. Whoop, whoop. Like, 
Or like you said, a panda face. Panda face is pretty cute, but their faces more than a mother could love. Everyone loves this face. And even though they have spikes, I can touch it and it's, it's fine. But there's a really unique courtship that Heliconius does uh, do, and so several males. Oh, sorry, I'm a little too big for you. Uh, oh yeah, here's so here's a female down here. So if she's freshly emerged, she's very attractive to other males. And also I think, you know, color and pheromone do play a part as well. But several males can be interested in one female and then they'll come around and they'll like, uh, they'll fly really close to her and like dive down and they do like a, a courtship dance. Um, it's very interesting and not all butterflies do it. Something that is special with heliconia. All right, is this guy just chilling out now? Is he too full? Um, he's kind of taking some uh, stuff off the leaf, but you can tell uh, he's well fed because he has something called a pollen load. And it's that little white thing that forms at the base of its proboscis, or, you know, it's kind of like a tongue straw. But that's how you can tell a butterfly is well fed. Like if you come to the butterfly center and you see a little white thing at the base of the face, that's what that is. It's just like storage food. It's like a food baby. Food, it's a food baby. I'm overwhelmed by the diversity of the plants in here. We've done a really good job of diversifying it here. Yes, um, one of my favorite plants that we happen to be right in front of, um, we just put it into the Butterfly Center and I've been cultivating it for the past three years. Uh, so here's the flower. Can you guess the name, Craig? If you were to name this, what would you name it? Really pretty lips. Hot lips. Hot lips. Hot lips. <laughs> so the common name for this is a hot lip and it's a native nectar source for uh, Central American butterflies, but we just put three big bushes into the butterfly center and the butterflies go crazy over this one. Can people kiss them? Mm -hmm. Not today. I've always heard that plants love music. What do you, do you play music in here for these plants? We play a few things for them. The butterflies and the plants uh, seem to really respond to Daft Punk oh. and uh, Fleetwood Mac actually. And which album? Uh, Rumors, it's one of their favorites. And all Daft Punk. Now, these are your favorite butterflies here, the glass wing. They are, they're so hot right now. Uh, the genus species is Greta Otto, a common name glass wing. And they're so tiny and cute. And we, Im we normally import them, and there's a lot of, there's a high mortality rate when we, when we do import them, because they're thick. I don't know if you can see, they, they're just so tiny and they're easily damaged. So our rearing coordinator has been um, doing a really great job uh, rearing these. And I think he said 800, he's done, he's done hundreds and hundreds of Greta Autos for the Butterfly Center. And our success rate, our emergent rate is through the roof. Um, so it's one of the great things that we're doing here, but they're my favorite. You can see through them. They're pretty. Yeah. There you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this little behind the scenes tour of the greenhouse here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. You can see a lot of these plants inside the Cockrell Butterfly Center. Bye, Craig! Horticulture. Hort Horticulturist. Horticulturist. Horticulturalist. Horticult. There's two ways you can say it. Horticulturist. Horta. 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 Culture. Uh oh. Horta. Horticulturalist.